people don't buy and sell houses every day unless you're an investor. So, you know, the scam artists know that and they basically take advantage of that. You're not familiar with the process and there's a lot of scams out there. We're here with Alex Ranja from Ranja Law. He is my preferred attorney, and we're just gonna go through a couple of quick questions about the process. First of all, tell us who you are and how long you've been doing this. I was licensed in 2013, so it's been about 10 years now. I've been loving it, so I love real estate. It's my passion, so it's been uh, smooth sailing. I started my own firm pretty much right away. Um, I worked with another attorney for about six months or so, and then just kind of went on my own, and it's been awesome. So tell us who is on your team and what makes you different. I'm the principal attorney. Um, I have another full-time uh, real estate attorney as well. And then I have uh, two of counsel attorneys that we use. As of today, there's, uh, I believe, 11 people on payroll. We have paralegals, uh, we have uh, clerical staff. Everyone's kind of have has their own like role in kind of getting the transaction done. We have a real estate department, we have an estate planning department, but we're fully equipped. Is that normal for like a real estate kind of firm? Some firms are smaller, some firms are bigger. It tends to be the bigger firms typically have like different departments. And so what we're doing is we're kind of focusing on real estate and like I said, estate planning, which kind of go hand in hand. So we're focused on real estate and so that's uh, what makes us different. So we're talking about real estate. Why is it important to have a real estate attorney during the transaction? Bottom line is you're buying a transaction or you're, you're buying an asset that's probably one of the most expensive assets you're going to purchase in your lifetime. It makes sense to have an attorney oversee that transaction. If you have everything going right, like great, but if something that happens and then you might lose your earnest money, the buyer might be on the hook for more than earnest money. If there's a breach in the contract, the seller might sue them for a specific performance. They might want like other remedies. They might be like, oh, our property's been off the market for you know, X amount of days. This is the quantified amount that you know we're, we want to seek judgment for it's happened. You want someone uh, to kind of make sure that the whole process is overseen correctly. We know like how the transaction is is handled, right? So like we're, we're familiar with the process. If you're gonna go and any agent that's been in this industry for a while, any agent that uh, had enough experience will tell you, you get a non-real estate attorney on your transaction, buckle your seatbelt, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> we've had situations in the past where, you know, we've had litigators tear apart the contract and we have pauses somewhere along the way in the transaction where we usually don't have pauses. Like it might take a couple weeks because they're like tearing apart the contract. Part of that is, uh, and that's what we do. We're, our bread and butter is real estate. So we're, our entire staff is trained on this process. We have, you know, workflows in place. We just yesterday, we had a closing. The attorney, I think he was like 75 years old and he didn't know the real estate process. Yeah. And so it's crucial really to have someone who understands the process, who can get you from point A to point B, you know, smoothly and streamlined and, and stress-free. And that's what we do. I had a client who used his family attorney he used it for the sale of his condo and the process was a little rough and I said hey when we buy this next place I want you to use Alex and during that process within the first god like five days he called me it's like I want to leave this guy a review this is night and day difference like yes this is a real estate attorney this is a guy who has a team who knows exactly the process because real estate isn't about someone winning or losing both people win you sell your place and you 100%. buy your place what do you do during a real estate transaction? Probably the first thing that we do is we look at the contract to make sure that everything's filled out properly. If things aren't initialed properly or there's missing, you know, activation clauses, there's legal issues. So we look at the contract, make sure everything's in place there. We have a five business day attorney review period. And so that's really kind of like your due diligence period as far as like, you know, getting your home inspection done, getting your homeowner's insurance quotes, things like that, just to make sure there's no crazy outliers there. But as long as it's not as is, um, essentially in that time frame, you're going to have your inspection, if there are major issues, then you can potentially ask the seller for concessions, whether it's like credits or maybe seller doing repairs in lieu of those credits. So we kind of button that part up, you know, and make sure that we close attorney review, make sure the inspection's all buttoned up. Is return review always five days? So most standard contracts is going to be five business days after the date of acceptance. So that's going to be after the date that it's actually signed off by both parties. Mm -hmm. There are some exceptions to that. Some builder contracts might not have attorney review, but like the multi-board contract, the 7.0 that everyone uses nowadays, mm -hmm. or the uh, Chicago area realtors uh, contract, those are all five business days. Awesome. And then from there, you know, you're just kind of like looking, we look at the overall process, make sure that the lender is getting the, the loan ready for closing. Mm -hmm. So if we're getting up on our mortgage contingency dates and they're not clear to close yet, we're going to work to basically make sure that those dates are extended and we're going to make sure that, uh, you know, their contractual obligations are in line 
And then we finally get to the closing. Once we are clear to close, we're gonna go ahead and schedule the closing. And then basically from there, we have an attorney go to the closing as well. What should clients be looking out for? What are the biggest things that they should be, I won't say worried, but be aware of? The nice thing about having a real estate attorney is like, we're looking at all the big picture items. The contract has a lot of like deadlines, a lot of dates that you, if you don't have an attorney overlooking that, like you have to be worried about mortgage contingency dates, your deadline for like getting homeowners insurance quotes, uh, HOA doc review if there's an association. Most of those deadlines and things we're gonna keep the client apprised of and we're gonna make sure that you know, they're in line with that and if we get close to those deadlines, we're gonna extend them and we're gonna facilitate this whole process with them. I mean, we're not gonna just be like, hey, this is what you have to worry about, figure it out, right? right? So we're gonna actually make sure that we do a proper analysis. For example, the health of the association. You know, we wanna make sure there's good reserves, we wanna make sure that there's no risk of any special assessments, and if there are, then we wanna potentially negotiate that with the sellers. There's a lot of scams in the industry nowadays. Mm -hmm. This is a very significant transaction. Yeah. People don't buy and sell houses every day unless you're an investor. The scam artists know that, and they basically mm -hmm. take advantage of that. If you're not familiar with the process, part of what we do with our firm, we actually invested in uh, bank grade encryption technology where we send uh, secured emails when we send out wire instructions, we verify it verbally. There's a lot of like logistical uh, processes that we have in place to make sure that the client's protected. So it's not alexroger at gmail.com? It's not alexroger no, okay. at gmail.com. Uh, okay. <laughs> we have definite uh, bank grade uh, secured uh, encryption. That's the beauty of it. Like not every law office is going to do that. What are some of the biggest scams you see affecting home buyers. Yeah, the big one is wire fraud. When you're wiring tens of thousands of dollars for your cash to close amount, you wanna make sure it's going in the right spot. How would they make sure it's going in the right spot? So first of all, we have secured email processes that are in place to make sure that there's verification and two-step authentication and stuff like that, basically to get everything to the client in the most secured manner. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, we basically have a verification process in place where we verbally verify the wire instructions with the client as well. I've actually had a client, um, this was like two, three years ago. They, they didn't speak English that well they weren't too familiar with the process the agent was new didn't really know what to kind of look out for and they ended up getting a scam email sent all of their funds to a complete scam artist and luckily we were able to get the funds back this is why you need to work <laughs> with a real estate attorney <laughs> reasons like this there's other scams like uh, you know post closing there's people that will send out it'll be like a letter that comes through and it says it's from like the local records office it says you need to send in $85 for a copy of your certified deed I'm yeah somebody yeah. sent that to me and I was like what is this so that you're gonna get it anyway. And they're capitalizing on the fact that the title company has to basically process it. It goes back to our office. We make sure that it's correct. So it takes a little bit longer for them to get it. Yeah, I think one thing people don't realize, like real estate is public knowledge. Everyone knows, you 100%. can look it up. So there are people who specialize in that business. Oh yeah. Is that when you apply for a loan, you get companies start calling you, like it's public information. You ever get a ticket? And then you know, all these mail pieces from attorneys offering yeah. to represent you for your ticket? Yeah. I got three attorneys. Uh, <laughs> asking about my real estate taxes this year. There you go. Um, my wife was like, what's this? I was like, talk to Alex. I don't know, I'm gonna talk to Alex, figure it out. So what happens at closing? Cause from the day you sign that contract to closing, the attorney has all the power. I am kind of the middleman, but the attorney is a voice and the power. So if there's anything that's going wrong, you have to talk to them or talk to me to talk to you. But closing specifically, like what happens there and how long is it normally? I would say on average, a closing is gonna take between one and three hours. Mm. Essentially what happens is you get there and you uh, have this big stack of like 150 docs that you have to sign. <laughs> the title company is not gonna explain those docs to you. They're gonna be like, sign them. So the attorney's role in being at the closing is essentially explaining those docs to you. We're also gonna look at the most important docs, like the deed, things that are like very, contain very specific information. Yeah. Um, we're gonna make sure those are correct. I can't tell you how many times I've been at closings where there's wrong information. And like if the person didn't have an attorney, then there's no way they would know what to look for. We make sure that all the docs are in place. We get you through all the docs, get them all signed, and then we get them to the lender. The lender then basically looks at all of them, make sure that they were signed correctly, and then gives something called funding authorization. And then the title company basically disperses all the funds and then it's basically one big congratulations your homeowner I mean at the end of the day like we oversee the closing process and we're looking for anything that's out of place after closing are you still there do you fit in like somebody calls you in a year like what can you help them with Sure, so most of the time, I mean, the vast majority of the time, we don't really get uh, any kind of calls afterwards, but we're always there if there's any questions that come up regarding that transaction. Sometimes people will come to us with like those scams in the mail and they'll be like, hey, is this something we gotta worry about? And then we look at it and we tell them, no, you can throw it in the, in the garbage. You know, sometimes there's post-closing issues that might come up. How would you handle that if something was hidden by the seller? Like the burden to kind of prove that the seller knew about it and disclose it is very difficult. That's something that we look at when we look at post-closing issues is to see what exactly 
exactly happened? What's the fact pattern? Is it? We have to look at each individual situation as it comes up. Any of those post-closing issues, would you handle that? Or do you say, here's a referral partner that we work with to handle more of like, let's say like litigation pieces? So it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. If it's something pretty straightforward within the transactional realm, we will, you know, we'll handle it for the client. If it's something that is going to definitely get into litigation, we refer that out. We have partner attorneys that we give referrals to all the time for litigation. Something you said earlier is that real estate isn't a transaction that people do every day. So it's sometimes not knowing what to ask. There's so many different options for referral partners in this business, attorneys being one of them. What questions should a potential client be asking attorneys if they're interviewing them to make sure they have the right person? So many attorneys that are general practice, they don't focus on real estate. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna understand the process like a real estate attorney is. As much as I want everyone to use me, do yourself a favor and use a real estate attorney, even if it's not me. One thing about us is we're very tech savvy. If it can be done digitally and paperless, we're gonna get it done. So a lot of attorneys still kind of fax things and like they're kind of behind in terms of like technology. So what that equates to in terms of the client experience is it's more streamlined. We have workflows in place that you know make sense and make sure your attorney is abreast of the uh, technological advances in the uh, legal industry. So another thing to look at is like, you know, how do they communicate? One thing with us is we're available texting, email, phone calls. Most attorneys don't text. That's one of the advantages. Clients can reach us if they need to reach us. You know, that's key. You know, if you have something going on, your lender comes up with uh, something that they need and, you know, the attorney needs to draft an addendum or something and they can't get a hold of someone, you're risking potential delays, right? So, like, you need to be able to get a hold of your people. So, definitely someone who's good at communication, someone who basically understands the process is crucial. I could agree on all of those. I've experienced all of those with you and experienced those with other attorneys that I've used. Like you said, as long as you're using a real estate attorney, I tell my clients, I don't care, just make sure you have the right person. I think with Alex and his team, communication. This guy has answered my call on a plane. This guy has answered my email on a safari. The one thing I can know about Alex and his team, he will never go dark on me. If I text you, you will either start the email chain with someone if you can't do it. I know who your assistants are, your paralegals are. If he didn't text me back, I'm just gonna start this chain and then it's gonna go from 100%. there. Communication, <laughs> I think, is huge. Technology, I've worked with some attorneys where we're faxing everything and man, that is tough. We have something we just completed. My client doesn't live here, buying a place in Chicago. For closing, he was in like South America. Right. And then like I texted Alex, I was like, hey, is this closing? Like, yeah, we're done. Like, oh. Oh. <laughs> One thing I think about real estate is every transaction is different. The seller is different, the property is different, the time is different. What happens in one transaction isn't going to necessarily happen in the other. So having someone who's seen so many to get an idea of, hey, this is something that's normal or it's happened before. I think one of the things that happens a lot that I've seen you've been able to handle or at least talk a client off the ledge is HOAs. Mm -hmm. HOAs aren't smooth. smooth. Especially if they're self-managed. They might not have all the ducks in a row. Right. And it's something to say, hey, client, this is what we're dealing with. Like you might move into this place and it might be a little bit different than what they talked about because they're not signing over the documents the right way. And even some of the bigger companies, we had one where the HOA went up by $100 and they forgot to tell us and it happened months ago. Right. When we got the PAL letter, like it was like, oh, it was 900. And then yep. when they moved in, it was a thousand. Yep. And it's because the HOA said, oh, we forgot. It just happened. So like, we're going to do our due diligence, do our best. But have you gone through a real estate transaction enough times to know, hey, this is something that might happen and it's just part of the business? 100%. Hey, Alex, I appreciate your time today, man. This is super helpful, dude. Always a pleasure. It. Oh, I love it. <laughs>